Hello, our next speaker, Dr. Ashok Grover, will be a release from introduction to our past president and has been a chair, a chairman ARC this time and he knows how valuable this, uh, uh, this term is and uh, the kind of inroads he made into it during his term is something we still remember. And he is going to be talking on the basis for opting for higher education programs beyond postgraduate term degrees. Thank you, Jatra, for giving me this important subject. Much of it has been covered by the previous speakers, so I'll make it emphasize certain points which were not emphasized. Uh, making the right choice after post graduation depends on what your career goals are. There are various factors that influence their decisions, and you need to know what the options are and which option is the best take for you. So, the career goals may vary from uh, your a person's goal may be more of uh, gaining fame, respect. For another one, it may be financial security or financial dominance for an individual. Or it will depend on whether he has that sentushed personality or whether he is the go getter. So that is what will essentially be important. And it will be determined by his academic background, his background in the schooling, in undergraduate, postgraduate uh, courses and the kind of exposure he has had for various uh, aspects of his training. It will also depend on his family background, his financial status of family. He has to have those at the back of his mind when deciding what to play, whether he thinks of comprehensive practice, ophthalmology practice, or whether he wants to practice a subspeciality. Very going to settle down and what will be the course of life that he plans to take. So, comprehensive ophthalmology practice is one of the important choices and it has the advantage of starting earlier, dealing with a number of variety of pathology and can be practiced in all kinds of settings. So essentially it boils down to whether to specialize further, whether to go in for a fellowship or not. Let's look at the other options as well. There are these senior residencies that are available in private institutions, government institutions, some are excellent, some are not so good. Then we have the fellowships in India, we have the qualification examinations that are available. We have charitable institutions which are used as a valuable training ground for surgery by many and then of course the options of going abroad for training. We don't have a survey from India but in US two thirds of the residents plan to apply for a fellowship most of them. Charitable institutions as I said hands on experience is useful and many opt for it as it gives them a place in the city or area where they could work. Abroad, we know about the options in UK. The PLAB is a major obstacle, but that can be overcome by one of those exams like uh, FRC Glasgow or uh, Edinburgh. And then US, you have the uh, either the uh, route of going through the residency of the MLE or you can go in for international ophthalmology fellowships, short term, long term, there are ways of getting over it, which I am sure is going to be uh, discussed in the later talk. And there are the exams, we have the FRC off, which is also now available in the country, FRC is Edinburgh at Glasgow, Fellowship of the ICO and Fellowship of the Collegium of the Olympia at Glasgow. So, okay. Well, Glasgow or Edinburgh examination provide mainly the help in forms of GMC clearance and practicing in some countries or enhanced emoluments in several countries. But there is no entry to specialist training. The uh, FRC or exam in addition is recognized for specialist training in UK, but then it doesn't automatically do so. You still have to go through the process of GMC and being in the institution there uh, takes some effort. IC examinations are the only worldwide specialty. Medical examinations in any specialty held in 85 countries 
they were a, a really great thing. But uh, I don't know the, the future of these will be, future of ICO being difficult. Now the FICO subspecialities, we know about the FICO program, the FICO exam that I had. We have detailed curriculum that now these have been revised in 2022 and are available on the website. We had a detailed structure, we had subspeciality goals which did really work. They gave their recommendations on all aspects which we spoke about. And uh, they were then vetted by uh, other experts and then they were sent to general body of AIS. And the first attempt, second time they were revised by another panel of experts in 22 and they are available on our website. So the fellowship is one aspect I think which has been already dealt with, but I just stress that choosing the right institution for the right subspeciality is important. Uh, your speciality choice will also depend on what your objectives are, which speciality interests you, what is the demand of the speciality and financial potential. And then again, what your objectives are, where you're going to work and uh, uh, how you're going to settle down, what your backgrounds, your strengths and weaknesses are. And again, personality types, your, you feel skilled at surgery, what, are you, what is your personality type and do you want to do private work, do you want to work in institutions, do you want to do more research. So this is, you need to know what the demand for different subspecialities is, this is data from UK, we don't have figures of you know, what choices are available or what jobs are available. Financial potential, again, no Indian data, but earning is as is listed here, so if that interests you. So in the end, I would, I would uh, summarize it by saying that you have to get to know yourself, what you want, what your background is, what your future objectives are. Make sure whatever resources you have, particularly in terms of your contacts with people and other resources, use them adequately. Be flexible in your choices. Explore all options. Don't close any doors without thinking. Think of where you would like to be in five years' time. And think of a life and a life balance with career balance. I think that is something we didn't do particularly well, but the younger generation is doing better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashok. While Dr. Radhika gets connected for her next presentation, Dr. Sandhu, she would have something to add. I was just mentioning about Mike, Mike. Uh, Sir, the university is recognizing fellowships, especially Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. Karnataka has a recognized fellowship. So, universities award recognized fellowships, which is obviously not recognized by agency, but that adds a layer of authenticity to the specialty. Otherwise, NFC doesn't yeah, you, yeah, you should do it. Thank you. Should do it. Yes, but Peko yeah. doesn't have the standing in the sense that you cannot defend Peko in the court of law. Once you, once you, once you get your back, you yeah. can start to speak. Right. You should but know. then, that forms the basis for the right. Right. So, we have the curriculum also already in place in the IRS to get the accreditation thing. 